Why do people hate the sidekick? This is a question I've been asking myself for a very long time. I think, as with a lot of things, people hate what they don't understand. I think most people associate the sidekick with tippy-tap point fighting, wherein it's a light touch without any real power. But that's one very limited use of the sidekick. Because at the end of the day, the sidekick is really a lot less sideways teep and a lot more like an uppercut for the lower body. Now, that's a bit of a loaded statement, so let's work backwards. The ultimate similarity between uppercuts and sidekicks is that they're both high-risk, high-reward strikes. And like all high-risk strikes, you need to be calculated about when and how you use them. Other strikes, like a jab or a low kick, are low-risk, low-reward strikes. They don't require a lot of setup, and you'll probably at least accidentally land one. The uppercut, for those not familiar, is a rising punch meant to either lick the chin of your opponent or fold them over at the body. You can throw it with the rear or the lead hand with the palm in towards you or with the neutral wrist. And it's usually done in a tight clinch range, but if you feel confident enough, you can throw it full force to the ceiling, Ken Master style. The uppercut is an extremely deceptive, powerful strike that if it lands clean, is almost guaranteed to disorient your opponent. Now, let's talk about the side kick. The side kick is a thrusting kick that can go anywhere on the body, but typically aims for the center of mass or the head. The usual goal is to knock your opponent backwards to disorient them, but if you land on the chin, it could result in a knockout. And yes, like I said earlier, in point fighting, the sidekick works as kind of a substitute for the jab, where it's meant to get in and exit quickly just to score the point, but that's really more of a function of the sport than anything to do with the kick. When you're practicing a sidekick, you're typically taught to fully lock out the leg at the end to get more power and drive from it, but I like throwing a more tight version that focuses on the opposite glute, and it works just as well for me. And just like with the uppercut, the yoko gere can be thrown with the lead or the rear side, depending on what you're looking for. So aside from a few superficial similarities, there doesn't seem to be that much in common between the sidekick and the uppercut. But now, let's talk about tactics. At the most basic level, the thing that makes these strikes the most similar is the work it takes to throw them. Because if we're talking about the cross or a roundhouse kick, I can throw them from a relatively safe, guarded position. But, unless I'm standing in a low hand, bladed position, there's a lot of movement involved before I can throw my sidekick or my uppercuts. Movement that could potentially get me hurt. But, is anybody saying you shouldn't be throwing uppercuts? No, it's literally the fourth punch you learn, and you're expected to use it in sparring immediately. Like with everything, it's about how you set it up. Making a big obvious movement before you throw your punch is a great way to get yourself knocked out. Same token, if you're having to get all the way into a blade stance, bring the leg up into a chamber, and then to find fire the kick, it's probably not gonna work. But nobody's saying to do it that way. Jack Dempsey famously said the sucker punch was actually called a sucker's punch, and it referred to somebody who opened a combination with the rear hand. Because logically, throwing the rear hand takes more time and is more obvious than opening with the lead hand making it easier for your opponent to see it coming and counter you. Similarly, I think opening with a side kick is a sucker's kick. Because unless you're very good at timing your opponent, using your side kick like a jab or a teep is a very easy way to get countered. Now, of course, there's guys like Tawan Chai from One Championship who use a side kick as a teep, but we'll talk about that in a different video because it involves different tactics. Instead, I recommend using the side kick as a trick shot. If I whiff on low kick, I could easily follow up with a side kick. Got an opponent who's running away from your straights? Use that sliding side kick to find home. And of course, if the single leg is coming after you, that side kick is right there. But my favorite way to use a side kick is as a counter. If I can get my opponent to overcommit on a cross or a left hook, all I have to do is wait for their momentum to bring them to me and then spear them on the side kick. Now, here's where things get interesting. Because everything I'm saying about the side kick I could also be saying about the uppercut. Because the uppercut is a great way to introduce new angles. If my opponent is blocking all of my straights and my hooks, I can use the uppercut to sneak in down the middle. So too, is the side kick meant to get your opponent thinking about a certain range of kicks and then sneak in from the side. And if you get your opponent to overcommit when they try to hit you, the uppercut is almost always right there. Ultimately what I'm saying is both the uppercut and the side kick rely heavily on the element of surprise. Because if you can get your opponent paying attention over here, 
when they should be paying attention over here, you're almost always guaranteed to land a big shot from the blind side. Honestly, that's true of most strikes, but more so for these two. At the same time, these strikes both come with huge tells and you need to watch out for them. Mostly, we're talking about dropping your hand too much when you throw the uppercut and chambering your leg too long before you throw the sidekick. Now, as to dropping your hand, there's actually a very easy fix for that. Stop doing it. But as far as chambering your kick goes, there's actually a very good reason for keeping your leg up before you fire off the kick. Because yes, I could be using this chamber to set up the sidekick, but I could also be setting up a roundhouse kick or even a hook kick. Or if I really wanted to, I could use this to set up a baseball cross. But if this chamber only ever results in a sidekick, well, then obviously it's a dead giveaway. And actually, now that I think about it, the uppercut kind of relies on the same gambit. Because when the punch starts from my chin, I could be going for the uppercut, but I could equally be going for a cross. Or I could make it look like I'm going for the uppercut and then fire off the straight at the last minute. But none of that is possible if I swing the hand back before I throw my uppercut. Now, let's talk about follow-ups. Because we've mostly been talking about the uppercut as if it's a guaranteed knockout shot, but nothing's ever a guarantee in a fight. Because the uppercut is meant to lift the chin, the most common follow-ups are gonna be a lead hook or a straight right, or if you manage to get the hands up, a good shot to the body. You can of course always follow up with a kick or a takedown attempt, but you can do that off of any shot that stuns your opponent. Now talking about the side kick, as I said, I prefer using it as a follow-up rather than adding follow-ups to it, but that's not the conversation we're having. I typically won't follow up a side kick with an opposite kick because one of two things is gonna happen. Either my side kick works and it sends him moving backwards, in which case now I have to chase before I can throw my kick, or after I throw the side kick, my weight drops down in front of me, making that weight transfer take a little bit too much time. But what I really like following up my side kick with is with my hands. So I'll use the side kick to set up a cross or even follow up with a swinging uppercut. But really the best follow up is to always remember your exit strategy. Because let's say for whatever reason my uppercut doesn't work or worst case, it misses. I need to remember that I can use this momentum to turn it over into a roll or turn it back into a block or like we just talked about, use it to set up the opposite strike. Same token, if I miss a sidekick, I need to get right back on my defensive game or if I'm thinking ahead, I can use that same momentum to set up a spinning kick. Throwing sidekicks haphazardly is a great way to miss by a mile and get yourself made fun of forever. But if you land one clean, it'll be one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. Just remember to always set them up properly Use them as counter or trick shots and always be thinking about your follow-up or your exit strategy. Do that and I guarantee you'll start seeing success. Or I guess you could just start spamming uppercuts and sidekicks and hope for the best. I'll see you guys next time.